I think you're ready. I think you are ready to start selling in person. Now I know, I know it can be a little scary because you're like, what if I don't sell anything? What if no one comes to my party? You know, I, I get the feeling, I get it. But in this video, I'm gonna prepare you for a successful, fruitful pop-in, pop-up shop experience. So let's get it. What's up guys, welcome back. My name is Michelle Bally. This channel that you're watching right here is called Learn with Shopify. It's an official Shopify channel that teaches you how to run an e-commerce business. But today we are not focusing on e-commerce, actually quite the opposite. Today we're gonna be covering everything that you need to know before you start your pop-up shop. Here's what we're gonna be covering today. Choosing the right location so that you get lots and lots of foot traffic. Pricing it out so you know how much you can expect to spend. How to decorate and design your pop-up space so that you're not breaking the bank, but you still look great and on brand. How to accept payment and manage inventory so that you stay organized. And we'll talk about how to market your pop-up shop so that you're creating lots of hype. But before we jump into all of this good stuff, let's get one thing out of the way first. This is really important. Okay guys pop-up shops cost money. So let's double check to make sure that hosting a pop-up is the right move for you. So if you have an established brand, maybe you're an influencer or maybe you run an e-commerce business and you wanna increase brand awareness and sales, then yes, a pop-up shop is gonna be the right move for you. If you have the budget and resources to produce a high quality pop-up, then yes, this is definitely gonna be the right move for you. If you are confident that you can generate enough sales or other business benefits like local brand awareness to justify that investment, then a pop-up shop is the right move for you. And if you're testing a retail experience before you make the commitment to sign a long-term lease, then a pop-up shop is a great way to do that. Okie dokes, choosing the right location is kind of super stressful, but kind of exciting because picking the right spot is key to your success. There are eight factors that you're gonna wanna consider. First, your target audience. Take a look at your analytics on social media and your online store and find out who your customers are. Then think about where they live, where they work and where they play, as well as where they shop and set up camp there. Next factor you wanna consider is foot traffic. Look for a location that is in a high density area, like a busy shopping street or at an event. Consider visibility. You wanna make sure your pop-up shop is easy to see and find, whether that means good visibility from the street or the first thing you see when you walk into an event. Consider competition. What other businesses are located in that area? Are there any other pop-up shops happening nearby? You don't wanna compete with too many other similar businesses. Keep local rules in mind. Check for any regulations or restrictions like permits, zoning requirements, and laws on how much noise you can make. Make sure the area is relevant to your brand and that it complements your brand's image. So for example, if you sell eco-friendly products, a pop-up shop in a natural food store or a farmer's market could be a good fit. Think about whether you wanna partner with another company. This could mean popping up in their already established store, or you could partner with a complementary brand to share the cost of the space and share each other's audiences. And of course, there's always the cost factor. Set a budget before you start your search. Okay, so we're already covering a lot of ground, guys. If you are confused or need any clarification at any point in this video, just feel free to drop it in the comment section and I will do my best to get back to each and every single one of you. But yeah, so once you've considered all these factors, the next step is to start doing research. Start Googling vacant spaces or stores that you might wanna pop up in and just get in touch. I would recommend that you come with a solid pitch and clear plan because that's gonna increase the likelihood of buy-in from others. Also, if you have people in your network that would be willing to work with you, then definitely 100% do that. In fact, you might actually even want to do that first. I hope you're finding this video helpful so far. And if you are, please consider giving it a like. It helps the algorithm show other people that this is a good worthwhile video. So thank you for doing that. I appreciate you. Now let's get back to the video. Once you get to the phase where you are in talks with the property manager, you're going to want to ask some very specific questions so that you know exactly what you're getting into. Of course, you're going to want to find out what's the rental cost. Find out the daily, weekly, or monthly rate, depending on how long you plan to be open. Be sure to check out multiple spaces and you know weigh your options and don't be afraid to negotiate on price before you sign, that's pretty standard. You're gonna wanna ask what's included in the rental cost. Grill down on what you're getting for your money. Make note of specifics like square footage, amenities, and guys, 
get everything in writing. You're also gonna wanna ask if there are any additional utility costs. You're gonna wanna clarify if there's any you know, additional costs and which expenses it is that you're responsible for. Utility costs for a pop-up rental can become a major unexpected expense, so keep that in mind. What's the layout of the space? Have a good grasp so that you can plan for how your pop-up will look and how it will operate. It might also help to sketch out a scale drawing to make sure that the space will work for your needs. Find out the specific dimensions of the ceiling, windows, doors, counters, pillars, you name it. This is good information to have when you start designing your displays. Can the space be modified? So you wanna know how much control you have over the space and you definitely wanna be aware of how you're supposed to leave it. Some landlords might want it left exactly how you received it. And then others reserve the right to keep any modifications deemed as improvements. So keep that in mind, you're gonna to wanna to ask upfront. Who's liable for what? So property owners typically will attempt to limit their liability. So definitely read the fine print on your lease. If something happens, like say like a fire or a plumbing issue, it's better to know ahead of time who's gonna be responsible for that. Is there internet or Wi-Fi? You're gonna need access to internet to process transactions and accept credit card payments. So determine if it is included or if you're gonna need to set that up yourself. Find out if you'll need insurance. Getting property insurance is often a prerequisite when signing a lease agreement. This kind of coverage protects you from a number of things that could go wrong, like theft or venue repairs. How much of a deposit is required to secure the venue? If your pop-up shop will span multiple months, the rental deposit is usually gonna be about a month's rent. Be sure to find out how and when you'll get your deposit back after the pop-up is over. What type of foot traffic can I expect? It's a good idea to do your own research on foot traffic, but sometimes the property owner will have the numbers and they can share it with you. And guys, this is super key if you're getting a booth at a trade show. Ask if you're gonna co-market the event. You probably wouldn't ask this to a realtor, but if you're popping up in another venue or a shop, definitely ask them if they'll help spread the word about your pop-up shop. Okay, now let's talk about money. How much is this whole thing gonna cost me? You probably wanna know. Well, retail analytics firm property estimates the total cost of a 30-day pop-up is about $32,000. But there's no clear-cut answer. Hey, you could have a friend of a friend who will give you the space for free and there's, you know, most of your cost covered. If you get real scrappy with it, you can even pull off a short-term pop-up for as little as $1,500. It's not bad. Start getting a feel for how much your space is gonna cost by perusing PeerSpace. So PeerSpace is an online search engine that lets you discover thousands of unique pop-up retail spaces for rent. So that one's great, but then there's also another one called Storefront. I personally have never used this, but if you try it and you have a good experience, definitely let me know in the comment section. So there's the space, right? But then you're also gonna have to factor in the cost of staffing your pop-up shop. You can definitely work it solo if you know you wanna cut your costs here, but it might just be like a little exhausting. <laughs> At least though, you're gonna to get to meet every single customer and you know, have those really nice face-to-face -face interactions. And that can leave a really good impression on a customer. Marketing, like running social media ads, is gonna be another cost that you're gonna to wanna to consider. You'll also have to pay for inventory and supplies, including the actual products that you're gonna be selling and say, you know, display cases that you're gonna show them in. And don't forget about insurance, guys. You will need to secure liability insurance to protect yourself and your business in case, God forbid, there are any accidents. The cost of all these things I've just mentioned, you know, it can definitely vary, especially depending on where you're at in the world. Your pop-up shop will cost less in a rural area than it would if you were setting up shop in a main street in a metropolitan city. I would recommend you start getting a feel for how much things are gonna cost before jumping in and keeping track of it in an Excel sheet. The design and decoration of your pop-up shop will play a big role in its success. And you'd be surprised how much you can do with a space. So choosing your furniture, decor, displays, and signage carefully will help you create the mood. To choose furniture and decor, try Facebook Marketplace for unique items that won't break the bank. Depending on your budget, you might also wanna consider hiring an interior decorator to help you plan essential mood setters like seating and lighting. There has been quite a bit of research done on the psychology of shopper behavior, especially on how stores display their products in order to sell more. So how and where you display your products matters. For more traditional product display options, you can check out glass cases and mannequins online. But if I were you, I would check out DIY options just like this because these will have more character and more personality. If you have some money to spend or you know you're gonna be there for a while, you might wanna get some displays custom made by a design and fabrication agency. They can help you build furniture and an interior that will be perfect for the space. Signage is key 
it can attract people from the streets or get a customer to add that little extra thing to their basket. So you're definitely gonna wanna check with your landlord to see what's allowed, but consider putting an A-frame on the sidewalk outside of your store. You can also put your own signage in the windows, even above the store as well. And then setting up posters or digital displays on the walls, as well as signage on, at checkout, is gonna help you get those extra purchases. Now to get these made, you can always do a quick Google search for a local print shop, or you can even rent screens. And don't be afraid to think outside the box. So yeah, see how much you're allowed to customize first and then you're off to the races. Okay, let's talk about how you're gonna accept payments. So you can start with the Shopify POS. By the way, if you're not sure, POS stands for point of sale and it works on Wi-Fi, and it allows you to sell your products in person. Okay, so my good friend, Chris here is gonna join us. He's usually behind the camera and together we're gonna show you how these tools work. Hey Chris. I'm shocked. <laughs> so you can get whatever hardware works for you, like this tap and chip card reader for 50 bucks, for example. And when you buy this, you get this tap and chip card reader, of course, but then you also get a USB cable for charging. So how you would use it is you would connect it wirelessly to your iPad or your iPhone, and then you would download the Shopify POS app and this allows you to accept contactless payment and chip payments as well. How cool is that? Also, it accepts Visa, MasterCard, American Express, Discover, Apple Pay, Google Pay. So if your store is based in the United States, then you can use this with an iOS or Android operating system. And if your store is based in Canada, then you would need to use an iOS operating system like an iPhone or an iPad. Now with all the devices that I'll be talking about, you're gonna get 24 seven support, free shipping, free 30 day returns, and a standard one year warranty, which is really nice. Okay, but let's say you want something a little bit more robust. The Shopify POS terminal is gonna be your best bet for a seamless checkout experience. What it comes with is this device right here, and it allows customers to pay at your countertop. You see, look at this, it's stunning. It's got a full feature display, plus it comes with a charging cable for it just like this. And it kind of just like takes it up a notch in my opinion, don't you think? It's kind of like a little bit more professional. <laughs> Plus it's easy for you to kind of just set this up, log onto your network, set up with your Wi-Fi, and you are good to go. And this might be my favorite part, but you can customize the display with branded images and logos. Plus there is a little added layer of your customers just feeling more secure in their purchases because they can actually see their checkout itemized on the screen. Huh. See? <laughs> so I would add the products that Chris is buying just like this, and he can, you know, see it as he's checking out. And wow. with this, you can allow pin entry, tipping, and receipt selection. So I'd like to leave a tip. Thanks. 100%? Probably not. <laughs> so both of these options are great, but this one just kind of takes it up a notch. And now with the magic of editing, Chris is going to disappear. Bye. Boop. This one is the POS Terminal Countertop Kit. Guys, this is where the big guns come out. This includes the POS Go, charging cable, and the dock that we just talked about, plus throw in a tablet stand case and tablet stand, and now we've got the full package. With this kit, you'll be serving customers at the counter with a polished and professional checkout. So guys, this is gonna run you $459. So let me show you exactly how you would set this up and what comes included. So firstly, you're gonna put an iPad in this slot here just like this. It does not come with an iPad, but it does come with a stand. And your iPad is gonna be facing you here just like this. Now the dock, that's the part that faces the customer just like this. Now the nice thing is, let's say my customer wants help finding something around the store. I can actually pick this up off the charging stand and go with them. And now we can in real time start adding items to their cart together. So with any of these tools that I have just mentioned, you are gonna need a Shopify store. If you don't already have one, I would highly suggest that you get one for your pop-up. This is because you're gonna wanna keep track of your inventory, both online and in person. And keeping track on a handwritten letter just isn't the vibe. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not the vibe, we're past that point. And guys, you have enough to worry about getting this pop-up set up. So you're gonna want one less thing to worry about and just, yeah, just make it easier on yourself. Actually, before you dive into a Shopify plan, for sure do a free trial. That way you can build your online store before you go live in person. And then on the day that you do go live, you're gonna feel ready, you're gonna feel steady, you're gonna feel good to go for that day when you open your doors. So yeah, if you wanna try that Shopify plan out before diving in, I will give you a free trial 
in the description box below. Okay, so you wanna make sure that this is a huge success. You want people lining up outside your door. You want everyone posting on social media about it. And okay, that's a valid point and you can have it, but it will all boil down to your marketing if you wanna create hype. So here are some tips to make your pop-up store a success. Firstly, build buzz by targeting media and influencers. Make sure that the influencers and media outlets you contact are where your target customers are looking to find local events and the tea on new brands. Also, build hype for your pop-up shop with social media. Maximize your exposure through social media before, during, and after your event not only with your own following, but with the editors and influencers that you're working with. Do this by sharing behind the scenes content, sending influencers your products, and encouraging user-generated content at the event. Drive traffic with email campaigns. Let everyone know that you're hosting a pop-up shop by sending a series of emails leading up to the event. Entice people to visit your pop-up shop with a special promotion. So for example, bring one friend and you'll both get 10% off your purchase at the pop-up shop. Super genius, I love that. Expand your reach with co-marketing opportunities. Ask hotels and restaurants near your pop-up shop to mention you on their social media feeds and offer them some free promotion in return. Tourists love to return home with a unique product and story they discovered on vacation. Grow post pop-up by collecting email addresses. Collecting contact information during the event lets you keep in touch with your customers even after your pop-up is over. So guys, hopefully this video has been helpful in getting you all the information that you need to make a killer pop-up shop. I know that you're gonna be great. Our subscribers are really growing, guys, and I'm like, what the heck is going on? It's crazy, you know what I mean? It's insane. So if you guys do wanna join the fam or you just wanna join me every week for more business-related content, then make sure that you're hitting subscribe and the notification bell, guys, if you wanna be up updated when a new video drops. No pressure, but if you're like excited to see the next episode, then definitely feel free to do that. But other than that, guys, I think that about wraps it up. Can't wait to see you guys next week. Peace.